it's a common mistake in the determination of the total income so now the second speakers we have with us shri nitin bhai gurda so we welcome him with a round of applause so before we invite our second speaker there are a few announcements dear members who have renewed their membership for this current financial year now we are ready with our gst number and we are ready with all the invoices and receipts and all so early next week we are issuing all the receipts and invoices to the all the members who have renewed their membership the members who have left yet to renew their membership either the continuing member or the new member we request all the members to please renew your membership at earliest we might be required to renew our membership after june so we request all the members to please renew your membership before end of this june <coughs> the recent very important news our beloved institute icai the board of studies is happy to share with us and they have proposed the new scheme of education and the training so all the syllabus of our chartered accountancy is going to be changed and institute has come up with the feedback forms so we'll be sharing all the feedback forms and the what is the scheme if it is so we'll share all the schemes with all the members so we request each and every members to please give your feedbacks so it will help us it will help our institute to redraft the entire scheme of education and the training so with this now would like to invite our past convener ca jayesh bhai shah to formally introduce our second speaker ca nitish nitin bhai buda thank you convener for giving this opportunity uh friends we have uh, sri nitin bhai buda uh, he is a uh, cost accountant and chartered accountant practicing as a chartered accountant he is a rank holder and practicing under the name nitin bhuta and company uh, he is a unique combination normally we have a faculty who is either specialized in direct tax or indirect tax here nitin bhai is a person who is specialized on both he is he is a specialized on direct tax and he is a avid writer and giving uh, lectures on the indirect tax also he has addressed various forums and the topic he has designed is a very unique way it will be a more interactive session hope everybody will enjoy without taking much of a time i uh, invite srinidhin bhai to take us through the lecture before before he take us through i request uh, convener and deputy convener to for uh, give give him a bouquet and uh, memento as a mark of our affection please good afternoon friends i thought after the technical session of reassessment most of us people will feel itne sare numbers discuss kar liye 13 14 3 saal 4 saal 6 saal 10 saal kitna number discuss karenge so uh, let me assure you 
I will not quote a single citations. <laughs> I will not quote a single section. But uh, I will uh, discuss the fundamentals of the policies which determines determination of a total income vis-a-vis -vis the IT returns. And for clarification, we would be discussing only financial year 21-22 relevant to assessment year 22-23. Before I start, I would like to thank each one of you to be present here to listen to my views. So I will start uh, this particular session with a couple of quotes on the common mistakes for the uncommon professionals. Most of us are treated as a uncommon professionals because if anything happens, the blame is only chartered accountants. Fortunately or unfortunately. So the intention of this particular whole session is to identify the common mistakes which I have experienced in my career of three decades, either in the review exercise or in my clients' cases, or when the matters are referred in respect of the assessments or litigations, which I'll be sharing with all of you. You may have a more uh, knowledge than me. I'm a novice. And I will restrict my discussion only to the income tax to the maximum possible scenario. Because if I can travel between the many laws as I speak, but if required, I will travel. Remember that the life's greatest lessons are usually learned at the worst times and from the worst mistakes. It is who has said, that person's name is not available to me. Experience is the simply name we give to our mistakes. Oscar Wilde. Learn from your mistakes of others. You can't live enough to make them all yourself. Eleanor Roosevelt. Everyone makes mistakes. Mistakes are the facts of life. It is the response to the error that counts. Nikki Ghavani. Take chances, make mistakes. That is how you grow. Given this background, can we make a mistake? Yes? Okay. So let's look at the next slide. Whether we can make a mistake when we read certain aspects which are very prominent for the purpose of the compliances. Typically, typically, all the speaker will put the disclaimer at the end, I will put at the beginning. It is my experience which I am sharing. It is my views. They are not binding on ICI. They are not binding on the conveners. Though convener is instrumental in coining this particular topic and giving me the brief, what to say and what not to say. If I say everything correctly, then he is to be given a credit. I should not be given a credit. Let us be very honest. All the members who are present here should go through the law provisions on their own and then accept what I said is correct or not. Because most of us don't read the law at all. It is my experience. We believe in a WhatsApp media to take the solutions. But is that right? I have my own reservations. And if I give any illustrations, they are purely imaginary. And any resemblance to your clients or my clients, it is purely coincidental. I have no intention to share anybody's information in a public domain. 
when this topic was referred to me, first thought that came to my mind is that I'm going back to school. Because as such, after the several years of experience, very few people file their returns. So in fact, to, for this particular session, yesterday I made an attempt to file several returns on my own. Because I, am, I was going to speak, ki, what should I do in a common mistakes? So I filed a couple of returns and it was a journey of exploration. And I felt it is like an ocean looking at the study of the various ITR forms with the finest details that are sought by the government from us, which we convey in an electronic format to the income tax department. What I observed in the income tax returns and that prompted me to think, is it an old wine in a new bottle? To a great extent, yes, there is no significant change, but the emphasis has been to extract as many information, as many details that needs to be provided. The reason if we look at the government is constructing more and more on the data and information. So if you study the forms very particularly, you will realize how in depth such a structuring of the forms is done by the government. These are the various terms which we see on a regular basis or in our day-to-day -day conversations. But if I look at very meticulously, ultimately the objective of such information is the data and or information. And with that particular objective, various provisions which are getting introduced on a regular basis, be it a 148 amendments, as we discussed in the previous session in detail, or look at the AIS, look at the TIS, look at the SFT filings, Look at the compliances which are getting increased day by day and what will come and what will not come. Look at the change that has been introduced under the corporate law in the restructuring of the financial statements. If you analyze the statement very minutely, it serves the different purposes for the different stakeholders. I expect IT returns of the corporates to get modified to that extent. So my first suggestion to each one of you, the moment ITR 6 is available for filing, please file them. So at least that will be comfortable. Second suggestion, please try to use the softwares to file the returns that will be little comfortable to you. Even if you use the departmental utility, it is very good, but software is an easy and comfortable way of doing it. It is my personal opinion. What is the objective of formulation and objective and the meaning of income tax returns? Any taxation system of any country always intends to increase the revenue and ever means of increasing the revenue streams for the government. If you look at the provisions that are introduced every now and then by our TDS provisions, new and new provisions are coming in, which intends the collection is increased in the hands of government. regulation and direction of consumption as well as the production activities in the country done by the various enterprise. Encouraging domestic industries by giving the benefits, stimulating ODI and the FDI in the country. 
reducing income inequalities, promoting economic growth, developments of backward regions, ensuring price stability, and expansion of a tax base. In a country like us, looking at the number of people filing the returns and what we spend on our social media or in our social life, it doesn't correlate with the way we file our returns in this country. So the expenditure is targeted to increase the revenue base. And I expect a lot of notices to flow in because of that to each one of our clients or our family members. And it is good for us if we will have more businesses to flow in. But before we go into, let's understand a couple of uh, canons of taxation as I understood. Canon of equality or equity, equal distribution among taxpayers. Does it really happen? Canon of certainty, certainty of tax provisions. Do we see certainty of tax provisions? They are changed at the drop of hat on a regular basis. What we plan today, next year, whether them, that will be valid or not, we don't know. Canon of economy, cost of collection of tax should be bare minimum. The emphasis is shifting to a taxpayer or uh, enterprises to deduct the taxes on a regular basis so that government has a minimum cost to incur to collect any kind of a taxes. Convenience. New portal that has been designed is expected to work on a real time basis. There were a lot of issues on the portal, but I assume now most of them are resolved. Most of them are resolved. I was one of the team members who worked on the portal to resolve the issue representing the ICI team. Canon of productivity. System should be productive and cost efficient. They wanted to reduce the time limit of refunds from 63 days to one day. How reality? Very few people can vouch for it. But there are some experiences where the rectifications are also done within five minutes. It happens. It is like a new baby that is born in our family. And till the age of five years, some teething problems are always there. But once it settles, all of us will enjoy the fruits. Canon of elasticity. It should be flexible and elastic. But is it really flexible? or it is twisting our arms? Question to be answered. Canon of simplicity, simple and intelligible. Are the forms simple? Is system intelligible? I will say if all the forms are correctly filled up, they are simple and intelligible, followed by the technical processes. And the message that is getting shared in the public domain, they don't need the support of our tax consultants. It means it includes you, me, and everybody. Diversity, dynamic systems, faceless assessments, faceless appeal, faceless tribunal. God knows what is going to be faceless in future. Rectification, search, Caesar. DRP, commissioner directions. Let's see, only time will tell what will happen. This is the last point of canons of expenditure. Taxpayers who can spend must file their returns. Okay, the expenditure that is mapped from social networking. Like a lot of people have a habit, I bought Mercedes. I spent huge money on the marriage expenses. I traveled overseas. 
but when we look at their written copies it doesn't substantiate ki they can afford such a expensive lifestyle that is captured now artificial intelligence machine learning with that they expect such people to file the return so that tax base of the economy increases and if they are not filing notices demands and rec recoveries are initiated using the appropriate procedures and this is a substantial law which is framed by the legislature assembly ministry of finance and cbdt working together and this is a policy formulation where none of us are part of they will specify how the classification should be done forms rules reporting and timelines what disclosures are required to be given directions restrictions and prohibitions and this is a procedural law and this is where all of us are concerned with so if you look at the substantive law which is done by the legislature assist assembly it is a structure presidential status of a person rationalization widening of tax base mat amt tds tcs aadhar compliance checks late fees equalization levy classifications what exemptions should be given what benefits should be given what deductions are permitted through investments or expenditure and presumptive schemes to help the small tax payers and double taxation avoidance treaty and the gift city socio economic factors and others and this is the procedural law which is considered for the purpose of doing the compliance if we read the returns very closely such information is asked to request for the details of the expenditure that we do and same thing is translated into the audit information returns also but there is a change which has come from the assessment year 22 to 23 non account pay checks or dd while computing the limit of 10 crore of 5% should be considered which was not there earlier so with this change that has been introduced we need to verify that particular angle ki do we are in a position of such a evidence or not if that evidence is not available audit is to be done in the cases where the turnover is exceeding 1 crore but it is less than 10 crores this is another change of reporting of the significant economic presence and it is applicable only in respect of the three ipas 3 5 and 6 and that is only for the non resident people for a resident people this is not applicable because for the residents global income is taxable only this information is required to be reported in the return nothing else there is nothing to be done and if significant economic presence is there in india then only this details are applicable otherwise they are not applicable look at the schedule of assets and liabilities where income is exceeding 50 lakhs immobile property details are asked for how do we repay a land which is a agricultural land can it be considered as a asset answer is no agricultural land is not a asset at all but if we are doing the financial statements or we are preparing the statement of affairs of the assessee that detail should be captured 
residential property, commercial property, ancestral property, inherited property, buildings and farmhouse, all should be covered. It can be self-owned or a co-owned. But if you don't have a legal title to the property, then that should not be reported in this schedule at all. And neither that should be reported as an income from house property where you don't have a legal title. Let's look at the movable assets. Jewelry, archaeological collections, drawings, paintings, sculpture, or any work of art. Vehicles, financial assets, banks, insurance policies, loans. Now, most of the assessees who are into salaried segment, they don't have any records of this sort. But they will be having everything. Jewelry, it's a common, it is never accounted in the books of accounts by default. When it comes to the search and seizure, jewelry is create a lot of issues under section 69A, which we'll discuss in the subsequent slides. But this information has to be correlated with the liability in relation to the assets. And it is correlated with what information that you are filing in your IT returns. If you have disclosed, you are safeguarded. But here the question comes, if it is a clubbing is applicable, where one spouse is owning the property and other spouse has only funded such a property. Can he report in his return or it will be reported in the hands of an assessee who owns the property? It will go in the assessee in whose name that property is registered. Person who has given the income will be clubbed, but the property will not be reported. Another challenge that we face is the inherited assets. There is no cost details available. It's a big challenge where a lot of people have possessed the ancestral property of the houses or land. That clarification is desired from the government, which is yet to come. Delisted shares, where the information is not available, how do we do it? Typically, it should be valued at cost that is available to the SEC. If we look at the last two decades of technology developments, look at the time gap where the technology initiatives are introduced by the government on a regular basis. And what will come in future, none of us know. Like this year, donation cannot be claimed if that is not auto-populated in Form 26 years in AY 22, 23. That is mandatory. So that point has to be taken care while you file the returns of this year. Overall, when we know every section will give the direction, discretion, restrictions, and prohibition. And if we don't comply, it results into penalties, demand, and recoveries. So we need to st structure and do the compliances suitably so that we don't get into a penalties, demands, and recoveries. Essentially, we are into the first part Transaction, books of accounts, financial statements, computation, self-assessment, ITR, and the TAR. That is what we are going to do. Here, our team will do the determination of the records, the information to be reported. And as a seniors or as an owner of the enterprise, we will be doing the ascertainment of the information, whether that is correctly getting filed or not. Roles will change according to the heads that we are wearing. Whereas intimations, scrutiny, assessments is the role of the government officials. They will do the determination as a ascertainment based on the 
information as per the schemes available to the them and they will either accept the returns prima facie or they will increase the returned income or they will reduce the return income they will allow exemptions they will allow de ex deductions or don't allow or they will allow the refunds or they will not typically many times which we have observed what information is reported as per the financial statements is not captured properly in the itr and that is where the biggest mistakes are captured by this system so typically whatever the information that we are reporting in the financial statements that should match with the computation as well as the itr reporting but the most important is the method of accounting that we follow depending on the class of ssc what method of accounting is permitted based on that compliance will determine and the accounting standards would apply the significant thing so far till last year we were reconciling the information of 26 as while filing the it returns but from this year we need to reconcile the information of ais as well as tis my experience of the assessment year 21 22 they are not passing the orders till you reconcile the information of ais and tis so what government has said in public domain ki we will not consider ais and tis for ay 21 22 but in reality in assessment it is happening ki they are considering we are requesting you to give the reconciliation icds impact has to be only given in the it returns it is not to be considered in the financial statements at all lot of people have <laughs> considered the impact in of icds in the financial statements as we have observed icds impact it's a topic by itself but i have tabulated all the things only we need to to the addition of a positive and negative impact and report it accordingly this slide is very important when we are filing the returns for any of our clients we need to have the each client data dashboard where by every information is available at our disposal to cross verify to ensure there is no error at all in the filing of the it returns so that in future we don't face any issues tax charter again very important that is to be normally complied expected to be complied from the government side and same thing when a tax payer is expected here some food for thought take the example of a kirana store in our locality if he want to go to go to that shop and tell them ki i would like to this item he will instantly tell us ki this item is not available he is aware stock of that item is not available but when we file the it returns we observe comment is mentioned the stock records not minted it's a food for thought second example we take the presumptive system of taxation for 44 ad in case of the traders where the person is registered for gst is filing all the details of hsn codes and the service accounting codes in the gstr1 he is reporting in gstr9 he is issuing the tax invoices he is issuing the ewe bills but in the it returns no stock records minted can such statement validate our assertion before the tax authorities food for thought or we just want to win the brownie points of our clients ki we have saved the taxes for you 
deductions are claimed when there is no they are not eligible for documents are not available investments not done can we plan to reduce such a excessive or aggressive tax planning again a food for thought assets we know what our clients own and what is their lifestyle but we are scared to tell them ki such information is required to be reported in the itr like a person earning 100 crores of income in his itr jewelry is not mentioned at all is it possible can we take a stand ki in assets and liability schedule that we can't report this is the all information they are getting targeted couple of written snapshots to whom it is applicable and what are the conditions which everybody is aware itr 1 and 2 is for the salary people 3 and 4 business 5 again business 6 is corporates and 7 is the trust typically ITR one is the easiest of all the returns, and following conditions are provided where ITR one cannot be used. And if it cannot be used, the person has to mandatory file ITR two. There is no choice. But ITR two cannot be filed by the business income. because that is not permitted option to avail new tax regime is available in the itr 1 and 2 itself we need not file but here we have observed many people have claimed new tax regime in the returns initial returns as without filing the requisite form but now it is controlled by the system itself so that take cares and corresponding changes also have been introduced in the returns of 22 23 whether you are continuing not continuing opting out whatever that is provided in 22 23 this year reporting of interest accrued on provident fund to which no exemption is available is introduced to be reported in the itrs itr4 is again the simplest easy to file but i have own reservation for presumptive anymore in future probably it may undergo a lot of change with lot of information to be called for and the conditions are also specified accordingly whereas itr3 which where we need to file the balance sheets where the business is applicable but here one thing resident and not ordinarily resident person can file itr4 he has to mandatorily file itr3 only there is no choice if you are doing a speculative business or a agency business or a commission or a brokerage then you got to file itr3 only many people have tried filing itr4 but it is getting invalidated because of the system control and itr4 is only for the residents here option of new tax region has to be exercised before the time limit specified under section 13911 if not exercised that option is lost this is the simplest recall of 1234 Let's go to the ITR five. 
this will be applicable to this classes of people. Now there are no more returns of 153 and 153C as it is not there. ITR6 will be for the corporates, which most of the people are aware of. Here one mistake which is made by the, especially in case of the trust returns. If a trust is return is having the house property income or a business income, but they are enjoying the benefits of the exemption, then they are not supposed to report in the respective heads of income, but it will be reported as the income of the exempt unit. That is very, very important. These are a couple of changes which are introduced in the ITR filings. As we file, that details have to be compiled accordingly. Changes on account of the depreciation has been provided for in this year's returns. ESO, again, the additional details when you have exercised, that has been provided for. The biggest change that has happened in this return is for the non-residents who have become residents in the financial year 21-22. They got to report this information separately. And similarly, changes have been introduced in the income from other sources. Since the today's session is not in the IT returns, I'm not concentrating much. And these are the couple of other changes which has been introduced in the IT returns. This we were, I was talking of disclosure of the alternative tax regime to be reported in ITR, which was not there till the last year. And the audit information, that is the additional requirement. If you have the investments in the unincorporated entity in ITR 6, that is only for the corporates, you got to disclose the, this particular details in the ITR. Till you report such information, your ITR 6 will not be filed at all. System will not validate the JSON file under any circumstances. All due dates are aware and I have written not applicable. The reason is this year, I don't expect any extension to come. No chances of any expectation. Please plan your affairs accordingly. Don't take any chances. Now our real session starts. Common mistakes. What I am told by your convener, either I should convince or I should confuse all of you. So now you people will decide whether I'm convincing or I'm confusing. Whatever we have discussed so far was only core startup. It's a warm up. Common mistakes, it can be unintentional or it can be intentional. What is the objective of committing a mistake? That will determine what will happen to that particular transaction. When it is unintentional, it is uncommon. It is done because client comes at the last minute to us or we rely upon our staff. Huh, he must have done it perfectly. He must have verified everything perfectly and we allow permission to file the returns. It happens. It's very common. That's why I say it is uncommon. It's a new uncommon. But mistakes happen, then it will remind me of, of a movie called Yuri the Attack. But here Yuri means unreporting of income. It's not the Yuri the Attack, which we saw Vicky Kaushal entering into Pakistan and coming back. But when I say mistakes with the intentional, it reflects the man's reality. Do we do intentional errors while reporting the IT returns? My answer, that should be the least thing that we should do as advisors. And if we do this earlier, 
we could when the assessments were in the physical mode we could confuse the income tax officer and pass the assessment orders and get the favorable orders in our favor but now it is all faceless so it will be mri are mri it is a medical term but here it is a mri means misreporting of income so please understand this thing very clearly under reporting of income and misreporting of income will be subject to penalty under section 270a of the income tax act where depending on the gravity of the situation 50% of tax payable or 200% of tax payable only recourse that is available is 270a that we can explore and my chance if you are not able to file the returns within the time limits then the late fees are invariably payable without that the returns don't get processed if return mistakes are made in the return we get a defective return notices and we need to respond and is still we don't receive the defective return notice due to some system issue if there is a error in processing then the rectification is required to be done for the apparent errors as provided under section 154 which is still with the assessing officer and mistakes can result into tax demands and now penalty notices are issued even for a petty sum of 1000 rupees also especially 143 one adjustments it is a system driven so the time has come we don't have a time to make a mistakes and once the penalty notices are issued they are automatically converted into a prosecution notices because this is all system driven this is a slide of penalty under the old regime of penalty it was either discretionary 100% or 300% depending on the nature of the matter and we could convince the assessing officer to drop the penalties either for the concealment of particulars of income or furnishing of inaccurate particulars of income but 270a has completely changed from 1st april 2017 where concealment of particulars of income is changed by uri and furnishing of inaccurate particulars of income is reported by mri the objective of such a introduction was to rationalize objectively certainly and clarity wise but still the question that remains whether it is mandatory or it is discretionary in my opinion still it is discretionary the reason is show cause notices provision is provided for and once the show cause is notice is provided and if you prove with the reasonable cause that proceedings can be dropped but always remember if the penalty notices are issued always try to evaluate the merits of the case and go for the 270 say double a option wherever possible so that prosecution can be avoided these are the various instances which are provided under the section all the concept has been borrowed from the uk courts or us courts to bring this and mri is a subset of uri is nothing else and whatever the judgments which were applicable in 271 1c they still hold good for 270 a proceedings even today it's my personal opinion and if i look at the definition of the term of unreporting of under reporting of income or misreporting of income it is not defined at all under the act one has to interpret based on the facts 
they have just specified the instances that's nothing else a very interesting question here on the residential status 61c provides giving within 4 years preceding that year been in india for a period or period amounting to 360 days or more in india amounting to 60 days or more in that year where the person is leaving the country for the employment to us person is leaving the india to take up the employment in usa first instant is stay in india is 182 days he will be resident there is no doubt if it is less than 182 days he will be non resident correct if he is not in india at all then he is also non resident from the next year but assuming his stay in india is less than 182 days but he is not able to get the employment in us then what would be his residential status whether it will be resident non resident or not resident and not ordinarily resident this is the moot question issue number first on the residents i am going to proceed as the we file the returns he will be treated as a resident because he has not got the employment in us that is the trigger point very minute thing to may come across such a situation because lot of people have relocated themselves outside the country it happens and here invariably this error happens condition has been provided if he takes the employment then only that thing is applicable otherwise not applicable from next year onwards you will be non resident that will be a different story altogether but for the financial year 21 22 he would be treated as a resident and his global income would be subject to tax again we are very familiar with the definition of the assessment year and the previous year for each year what assessment year is applicable it is written on the right hand side but there are too many aggregators who are available in public domain or the assessees who file on their own they select incorrect assessment year while uploading the returns that is the biggest problem or if our junior staff who is filing the returns for the first time they also make such a mistake if it is not properly supervised or we bank on them so assessment year selection has to be particularly taken care let's take the situation of a tax audit applicability bill trader is having a turnover of 1.5 crore all in cash is tax audit applicable okay can he opt for 44 ad yes so he can go for itr4 okay next question comes if that is a case what happens to disallowances under section 40a3 whether that to be considered or not to be considered Forty-four AD only provides for the percentage of profits. It doesn't provide the income computation. So forty-eight three disallowances will come into the picture. Other thing, milk traders selling the soft drinks, biscuits, is doing all other kind of thing. Typically, milk is exempt from GST. 
but not the other products. 99% of such dealers are not registered for GST. That is another food for thought. Restaurant having a turnover of 5 crore. Corporate restaurant. 90% in cash. Whether tax audit would be applicable? Applicable. If it is 4%, only through Sugi. Will it applicable? No? Correct? 96% through Swiggy. So 4% cash. Tax audit will not be applicable up to 10 crores. Another classic builder receiving 15 crores as the advances towards the under construction projects, whether tax audit will be applicable or not. I'll be showing advances as a liability in my balance sheet. Will tax audit apply or will it not apply? Gross receipts, percentage completion. That is a stock, no sir. It is a stock. I will value my stock. Where is the sale? Tax audit is applicable based on the sale only, no? If I'm not going to recognize as my sale in my audited financial statements, will tax audit apply? Answer is, Tax audit is applicable. There is a Madras High Court judgment on this particular point. Because advances towards the under construction properties are provision of service. Thus, it was so even a concept of GST will trigger. Another common issue which has been observed if you disallow expenses under the tax audit reports, they are not considered in the computation as well as in the ITR. If that is the case, once you upload your tax audit report, and if that doesn't match it, effective notices will come in. And then you have to file the return accordingly. And if the time limit is gone, consequences would follow. So these are the couple of instances of tax audit. Let's take up the another peculiar issue of provision for gratuity, clause 21E. We have seen co contribution paid to the approved gratuity fund is also reported in the tax audit here. If it is reported under this particular clause, it will be automatically considered as disallowable. Only what is to be reported is the provision for gratuity. Not the contribution to the approved gratuity funds. Delay in contribution of PF and ESIC which we report in clause 20B. If there is a delay from assessment year 21-22, it is to be considered as disallowable. Besides, 43B. If any interest is paid to MSME vendors, then that should be disallowed. Especially if it is a corporate return, if there is a MSME one that is filed under the Companies Act, that is to be correlated when you are reporting the information in tax audits. TDS reporting if there is a merger, acquisition, spin-off. So there is a company A which got merged with company B. Company has deducted the TDS of under their 10 number. Is it required to be reported in the clause 34A of tax audit? If the documents are filed under the Companies Act, then it is required to be reported. 
even if there is a different pan, pan number, that care should be taken. Another biggest mistake which we have seen, contingent liability which is reported in the financial statements is reported in the tax audit report. It should never be reported. And a lot of additions have happened, rectifications have not been possible, and it has gone into the appeals. Again, next issue, brought forward and carry forward of losses. If it is incorrectly processed under section 143.1, have you applied for a rectification? If that is a case, then you can report the correct figures. And still if that rectification has not happened, put that information in the observation and remarks. If, how have you reported? And if that rectification is not possible or rejected, go for appeal. And that fact should be brought in the observation and remarks and it, your tax treatment should be properly explained. Partner receiving remuneration and interest from firm. Can partner claim the benefits of presumptive scheme of taxation under section 44 AD or ABA? Answer is no. People have claimed only deduction that is available is the profession tax. And if you have paid any interest for investments in such a firm, then only it can be claimed, not the other in the other expenses. Related party transactions. Ideally, before the finalization of the tax audit reports, it should get finalized and it should be appropriately reported in the applicable schedules or it should not happen if details are finalized after you file the returns or if you after you file the tax audit reports. But here one peculiar case, in can the director remuneration be paid as a percentage of net profits? Is it permitted or is it not permitted? What is the view of the house? Answer is it is permitted. But only then TDS will get deducted accordingly. So you have to be on your toes. There is a circular now of 1968 which permits this. It is issued by the CBDT itself. And if there is an international transactions with the related party, then transfer pricing audit report is a must. Many people don't file the transfer pricing audit report. Even if the transaction value is one rupee, then also that transfer pricing audit report is a must. So due dates for filing of the returns will be recalculated accordingly. More and more, government is concentrating using the risk management strategy, artificial intelligence and machine learning on the report related party transactions, which you report in tax audit reports or in your ROC returns. So they are capturing these details from all the aspects. Typically, such kind of a reconsideration should be prepared before filing the returns. If it is a positive difference, then we need not worry. If it is a negative difference, sorry, if it is a negative, that need not worry, but if it is positive, we need to investigate. Reason what is happening, SSC having 100 accounts, he is reporting only five accounts in the books, accounts, in the idea. That is another challenge. So that bank interest difference is arising. And now that is captured through AIS and TIS. 
because everywhere other linking and the pan linking has happened. Again, this is a topic by itself, but I'm going to touch upon it. Method of accounting, treatment under the GST can definitely vary as compared to the income tax treatment. So reconciliation may arise on account of the recognition of her revenue in the financial statements. Your reconciliation of GST returns has to be done vis-a-vis -vis ITR, tax audit reports, financial statements, Form 26AS, TIS, AIS, and ROC returns. Lot of show cost notices are issued for the mismatch of the turnovers. So this has to be done as a mandatory. If there are multiple GST and numbers, then consolidation has to happen and that reconciliation should be in place, supported by GST on 9 and 9C of the each GST registration. Another biggest blunder that has happened in the GST returns, many people report unveiled revenue in GST returns, which it should not be reported at all. It has happened. Many infrastructure companies do this, but it is wrong. Reconciliation has to be in place. We should correctly determine and do it. Input tax credit reporting. As per the tax audit clause 27A, it has to match. There are many people who take a stand. Ki it is not applicable, but in my opinion, it is applicable. That information should be reported in clause 27A of tax audit. Again, a divergent view. If you are taking a divergent view of it is not applicable, then you should notify suitably. GST refunds vis-a-vis -vis books of accounts disclosures. Again, the manic of fake invoices and bogus invoices. Very important. Bill of entry issues in case of the auction goods. Typically auction goods under the customs happen when they are not cleared and they are sold through auctions. So highest bidder purchase such goods from the person who is authorized to sell such a goods. But what is happening? Such information is, is not reflected in the ice gate information of the bidder, but is reflected in the auction errors because it is deposited in the auction error. An auction error reports such information as an exempt sale, even though he has issued the tax invoices. If he has issued the tax invoices, and he is supposed to report in B2B. That is what typically happens and it's a big issue. Some invoices, GST is not levied for non-payment of RC, RCM levies, incorrect payment of levies, assess if not registered, even though he's required to register, which we discussed about that milk dealer you may come across. Capital gains. Let us take the example. My cost of the property is say one crore. And my valuation which I get as on 1, 4, 2001 is 80 lakh rupees. Do I go for 80 lakhs or do I go for one crore? It is optional. It is quite possible. If it is beneficial, then only it should be exercised. Cost to the previous owner, if it is not available. But we can do the fair market values on 1st April 2001. Can he adopt? We can. But the trail has to be established. Incorrect deductions or non-deduction of TDS under section 195 IA of the Income Tax Act. 80 lakhs TDS deducted, 20 lakhs TDS not deducted. Happened. So it is required to be corrected. 
tested securities are reported either with stt or without stt if you correctly report no problem but if you report which is with stt without stt then the consequences would follow accordingly very interesting if the shares are sold through ipo by the promoters with the tax rate of 10% or a 20% would apply plus surcharge plus cess 10% how sir what circular says ki at the time of purchase if you have paid security transaction tax and when you sold at that time also security transaction is paid yes yes it will be yes but this aspect has to be taken into consideration depend on the timelines incorrect reporting of isn number jewelry sold through barter i have a jewelry chain of worth say 1 tola i exchange it for 2 tolas am i required to report the capital gains technically yes but no people nobody reports it's a fact non reporting of capitals on switch out from one scheme to another very common non reporting of capital gains accruing due to sale of foreign exchange securities either that is not reported any what if it is you are going to report such a transaction it is subject to tax at the normal rates indexation benefits would be available please keep in mind it is only for the residents foreign exchange securities are taxable non reporting of sale of unlisted company shares this information is captured from itr of the companies that you file as well as the roc records here again the issue is i transfer say for 1 lakh rupees fair valuation is 20 lakh rupees which value should be considered for the capital gains book value is 1 lakh fair value is 20 lakhs fair value should be considered yes i am coming to the next point wait wait there are lot of informations are there i have around 80 questions so don't worry these are the additional disclosures which are provided ki now you have to disclose the zip code of the country also so zero mapping will be used to identify the whether that property exists or not this is from assessment year 22 23 slum sale you got to report very very meticulously and correspondingly that report form should be filed in itr let's take the very favorite example income from salaries can there be multiple employer yes but if employment contract provides you can't take the multiple employment then what to do Provide na? Is there in the every appointment letter you can't take up the another employee? Agreed. My only point is to draw. I'm just pointing the things. See, income tax is concerned with the correct disclosure of your income. If you are complied, you don't have to worry. Whether you take up the multiple employment is a legal aspect altogether between a company and the employer. Income tax has nothing to do with it. Do we reconcile with Form 16 and 12 BA? Yes. 
is it to necessary to reconcile with 26 AS, AIS and TS? Yes. Can HR exemption be claimed if not allowed in Form 60? Yes. Risk clause? Claim it. There is no bar. Only thing is you need to have the bifurcation of your pay scheme, CTC. If an employer has not considered the perquisite value while determining the TDS under Section 192 to be, still you have to do it. ATG exemption. If it is to a specified as association, then the ATG can be considered by the employer. Specified when it's a chief minister or prime minister, that is permissible. Otherwise, it's not possible. ATEE. In fact, when you file the returns, you can claim all the deductions which are not considered by the employer. Invariably. Profession tax. If not claimed by the, considered by the employer, you can claim. There is no bar. Have the documentary evidence. House property. Am I required to report only one property? You are supposed to report all the properties. Let out. Deemed let out. Deemed let out, what will you do? No. Please understand now they are checking the rate preve getting prevailed in that particular area while doing the assessments. They are literally checking. So be very particular about the offering deemed rent. You have to offer which is the highest to tax. Where are tax though? Government ko kuch na jiya dusra. Simple. Do property diya na. Tisra property diya to deemed rent chalo. Sir, coming. Next question. I have anticipated all the questions that will be there. If it is a jointly owned property, reflect respective percentage and report in both the IT returns. Take care to report. I have a clients who file the returns for 100 rupees income also. Just to maintain the continuity. Two. Two. Two are, are, are you going to claim the depreciation? No, no, you are not going to claim that depreciation. Are you going to charge the rent? No. That is that is what I am saying. So you have to treat only two houses are free, sir. Third house is accessible. Even and choice is yours, which one you want to select? Yeah, own, own yes. Even, even a commercial rental income from a commercial property is covered under income from house property. But sir, not even on rent, not, not let out. Sir, you have three properties. Two exempt. Third, choice is yours, which one you want to treat. You can select which is the least rent. Choice is yours. Sir, I will more than 10 properties. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Then will I get deduction of the income from Obviously, 30% deduction is available, sir. Interest on borrowed money is also there. There is no harm. If you are paying interest genuinely, then you will get it. That was my next question. Housing loan interest. Should I pay provisional? Should I pay final? Final should be considered for the salary deduction. Provisional is fine, but while filing the IT returns, only final certificate should be considered. Another question. Lot of people claim the interest on the under construction property. 
if only income is subject to tax as an income from house property, then yes. But interest that you pay for the under construction property, when after it is converted into a property which can be occupied for the purpose of house, you can claim one fifth for the next five years. That is permitted. If the property is not legally owned, can he claim? He cannot. Reporting of house property where clubbing provisions are applicable under section 64. If it is co-owned, then it cannot be a clubbing. But if it is owned by one spouse, another spouse is given, then the rental income will be subject to tax. I'm, uh, using the commercial property of my own office. I'm already owning two houses. Mm -hmm. Then whether that uh, deem rate is to be considered. See, there is a one option which is available. But now what has happened ki, the change which came, if you are treating the property as your commercial property, then you are supposed to claim the depreciation. Then that, if you are claiming as a depreciation, then you are safeguarded. That is the case of Michael Richard. Yeah, it is, it is a fallacy. It's a fallacy provision of the law. It's a difficult thing. What the provision says, if the two properties exemption is available, Third property is not available. There are some judgments which said ki exemption is available in respect of the commercial use. That is possible. Yeah. That is where the thing is. But due to AI, notices will come and then you have to fight it out. You have to take a call accordingly. So commercial property well, which one? Consider is not considered as a SOP. No. Twenty six Q B, no sir. Choice is yours. If you are paying on a monthly basis and deducting the TDS on a monthly basis, then monthly. If you are paying for the whole year, then in the last month. Or if you are vacating. In the year month in which you are vacating the premises, you specify the number of months rent that you are paying. You got to reconcile the information with 26 years. If Assessi has claimed the HRA benefits in the name of his parents, his, whether his parents are required to file the returns, answer is yes. Now that is captured in AIS. Reconsideration with AIS, TIS is a must. Is it necessary to report the overseas property? Answer is yes. For the resident assessees. Is it necessary to report the properties for which the nomination is there in the name of the person? Answer is no. Or even if he's a beneficiary as per will, no. It is to be reported only when he gets that right in that particular property. Very simple example. Mr. A has given a loan uh, property to HDFC Bank for a rent of 84 crores for seven year lease. That is rupees 12 crore per annum. In FY, 21-22, relevant to AY 22-23. HDFC has deducted the TDS at the rate of 10% under section 124I. HDFC Bank have filed the TDS returns showing the 84 crores, deducted 8.4 crore as TDS. Can Mr. A claim the TDS of 8.4 crores in AY 22-23. Coming to, coming to it. Wait, no. Let me finish. Against yearly rent of rupees 12 crore. If yes, 
Why? So that option of carry forward and brought forward. But is there is any better way of reporting such information? What we do typically, we report the information of TDS deduction each year wise through seven entries. And then for each seven entries, say for one year 12 crore, which will map with my 26 AS and the rent which I declared and all other things for each other years, we report as a carry forward. So that any mismatch notices don't arise and the disclosure also happens. So beneficial circular was issued earlier on this particular point. It can be claimed, but now that option is available, but we do structuring in this particular way where upfront rent is paid for three years or five years or seven years. It is only proper reporting required. That's it, there's nothing else. The idea was to explain the concept. Let's come to the profit and gains of business or profession. How much time do I have? Sir, we'll come at the end. How much time I have? 15 minutes? Fair enough. Matching of revenue with the cost is a must. Please take care of this part based on the documentary evidences. Prepaid expenses provision invariably is missed out if a mercantile system of accounting is followed. And if you are following a mercantile system of accounting, prepaid expenses, if you have claimed an in tax audit report, you got to report suitably expenses of earlier years. Deferred revenue expenditure. It's a accountant's brainchild. There is no concept called deferred revenue expenditure at all should never be encouraged. We have come across many cases of the companies just to show the profit. It is shown as an asset in the financial statements, which is absolutely wrong. Income received in advance is the next case study which I have taken. Withholding tax issues. If the income visa with TDS has to be mapped and if it is not offered, then we should not claim that TDS in the IT letters at all, claim it as a carry forward. Can I claim the depreciation on the motor car registered in the name of a director? Pardon? Yeah, Claiming leave, whether you claim or not. What section 32 says? You can't claim. Now let's extend the argument further. 194R has come. Will you deduct the TDS? Will your director pay the TDS? That is applicable from the next year. Food for thought. Sir, logic is the same. Though there is a judgment to that effect, it says the partner and the firm are the legally the same. So it can be a it can merit you can claim. Depreciation on self-created goodwill can never be claimed. Very interesting case study. A tax invoice is raised in financial year 21-22, say for X amount, say 5 lakh rupees. I have paid GST, filed my GST R1, GST R3 B. And if I'm doing the audit or I'm filing the returns, forget the audit right now. First consider the non-corporate. If I'm filing mercantile, I will offer, can I still offer that as my revenue where I have not completed the service? If I have raised the tax on OS, can I show that as an income? Answer is no. If I have not provided the services, you can say build, but services not provided. Show as a liability in your balance sheet. If it was paid, and if you are a professional, then on a receipt basis is subject to tax. But corporate, it has to be shown as the income received in advance. And TDS also should be mapped vis-a-vis -vis the year in which you offer to claim. That should be taken care. TDS may be deducted in AY 21-22 or 22-23, depending on the method of accounting the payer follows. Very interesting thing. 
if a land and building is transferred to partner on reconstitution of a firm in FY 21-22, whether section 43 CA or section 50 C would apply. Any answers? I will give you the answer. It will not apply. The reason is section 43 CA and section 50 C talks about the consideration. When the asset is transferred from a firm to a partner, there is no consideration in it. It is only distribution of profits. It will not apply. And consequently, section 194 IA also will not apply. Clubbing. Lots of mistakes happen in the clubbing of the income. Miner's income is invariably not reported. But if a miner is earning on his on his on account of his skill, then it is an individual return to be filed as a minor by the parent. Loss on clubbing of income would be permitted. Very interesting. Just general income, agricultural income, acting, any other TikTok, YouTube, beauty parlor receipts, singing receipts. They are typically shown as the income from other sources. Can section 68 be invoked? Answer is. If section 68 is invoked, then special rate of tax applies where the tax rate is 100%. So if you are offered 5 lakh rupees, 5 lakh rupees tax payable. There is no choice. But the section 68 says, if it is mandatory to maintain the books of accounts, then only. Section 68 can be invoked, otherwise no. Typically, that is to be kept in mind. But a lot of people file their returns just to income show the income up to 5 lakh rupees so that they don't pay the tax. But if you're offering the income as a singing, this is, and he can't even sing. Like me, I can't sing. If I sing, then probably I don't know what will happen. But validity has to be seen whether that is a genuine thing. Documentary, corroboratory evidences needs to be kept on record. Separate reporting of deemed dividend is provided for in assessment year 22-23. It will be correlated with the tax audit disclosures and ITR 6. Another People have claimed the deductions on account of the principal repayment of the housing loan for the under construction property. Again, that is not allowed. If father is contributing, say, 5,000 rupees in his PPF, and he has contributed one and a half lakh rupees as a PPF contribution. Assuming ATC limit was 1.55. Assuming, I said, can he claim 1.55? One Only one account. One and a half lakh rupees, that is to be taken care. Though the max limit is 1.55. ATG, if now it is not reflected in your 26 AS, don't claim. Deductions claimed without making the investments avoid. Can you claim the benefit of interest on NRO savings account? NRE is exam. I'm talking about NRO. Taxable. No deduction under chapter 6a. Please take care. Tedious to tedious. There is no issue. Another interesting, a firm is earning the income from foreign sources. No TDS is deducted. 
can such income required to be reported in the schedule of fsi answer is no there is no tax deducted at source there is no tax relief claim not to be reported and if the tax is deducted then form 67 should be filed before the due date only exception is if you are filing the updated return which is notified under section 139 8a disclosure of foreign assets is a must in the it returns if not disclosed one may be invoke the provisions of the black money act so that is to be extremely taken care and that should be reported and if there is a income even that should be properly correspondingly reported in the indian tax returns if applicable in assessment year 2223 disclosure of foreign assets has to be done on a calendar year basis as per the circular issued on 27th august 2019 so can we anticipate the calendar year to come in the future maybe so what happens to income which you earned in the last quarter you will report in your itr of 2223 but you will not report in the fixed asset schedule fixed asset information where you are reporting take care of that part icds i have already taken up 145a compliance is very few people do matching of revenue with tds now it is mandatory but earlier yes it has happened 206 ab defaults not considered bad days if you are a gst registered person you will have person's pan number so ideally you always report with the pan number another common thing directorship information is not reported shareholding in the unregistered shares shares not reported sale of unlisted company shares is also not reported now that will be mapped with the information reported in the itr 6 of the company so you will get the notices short term capital gain is offsetted against the long term capital loss that's another common issue tenny we have already discussed earlier all bank accounts should be reported in operative bank accounts avoid reporting proper take care to report the ifc codes can you claim the refund in the cooperative banks cooperative banks are not mapped for the validations so it is not happening it should be only nationalized bank or the private banks but you can report the account details there is no harm but don't say select it for the refund purpose please verify the change the email ids of the clients directly don't put your email ids primary account holder should report secondary account should not holder only exception in respect of the foreign accounts where you have a signing authority that should be reported in the respective schedule and the refund be claimed in deceased persons bank accounts answer legally no people claim madam i'll just finish and then you can ask me information of bank interest should be tallied overseas bank account should be reported in the residents returns invariably ideally take a declaration from the client ki i don't hold any bank accounts overseas if they are denied put it for your safety signing authority if you have please report non residents are not expected to report any overseas accounts at all this is a verification only point which i would like to make sometimes we are getting the notices from the department where the dscs are expired how they sign i don't know but if we try to sign dscs which are expired they are not accepted 
so verification also many times people miss senior citizens invariably miss take care of they may seek to do the validation through atms that is permitted because it's a digital trail most of the people are doing transactions on digital mode how will you report in 21 22 that is the audit issue also and reporting in the itr right now whatever transaction we do on a google pay or we do on a phone pay or whatever the options available they are not getting auto populated in the as but in future yes it will be so how will you map map that information these are the couple of issues which is a summary of what discussion we have done if the rent is paid and the maintenance is paid separately to the landlord whether you will deduct the tds on rent plus maintenance or only on rent rent plus maintenance you are paying on his behalf so it is a part of your rental compensation what about municipal taxes municipal taxes is the obligation of the owner not yours so if you are paying then the tds will apply same logic sir logic is the same whom it belongs to can they pass on the day see it's a commercial arrangement between two people pagdi if it is a 2 lakh 40000 rupees do you think the rent will be 2 lakh 40000 rupees never that question will not arise this only arises where the rent is more than 2 lakh 40000 rupees how to file the returns of the deceased persons that is another challenge the last but least when we are filing the returns we are saying ki we are reporting the information which are correct and complete and in accordance with the provisions of the act and it is a declaration which we are giving it's a binding so if anything is wrong it may create always whenever you are filing the returns send the draft to the clients take their confirmation and keep it on record for your safety because your ip address is captured according to me income tax return means information trail review ar is annual information reports according to me it is accurate intel resources sc5 is a system factual and timeless transparency reporting quicker processing whether is a dream or a reality time will tell minimum wages act provided ki more than 3000 rupees salary has to be paid through account paychex i don't want to comment further 100% knowledge about the facts of the client should be mapped in our systems as a kyc self validation of related party transactions and the deductions and the exemptions must always concentrate on substance over form consistency and disclosure and claim strategies whatever you follow follow permanently and you should be 100% aware about what you are filing technology requirements is a must in future can we anticipate the group returns filing it may be and again last point to leave why the scope of disclosure is increasing every now and then now i go back to my journey of exploration with you ashish thank you i appreciate all of you for listening to my session and i always say surround yourself with the people who talk about vision and ideas at work thank you and i'm now open to easy questions not a difficult questions please one thing hmm. you say this is the first thing from already given a certificate that is filed also submitted the link hmm 
See, in that case, you got to file a grievance as permissible and you have to wait for the resolution. Simple answer. The best thing what you should do is ki try to give the bank account details of the legal hair and whose account if they can issue the check, you are safe. Yeah. Still, the other systems are not that uh, updated. It will take time, but you got to register, convince, fight it. CPC, try CP gram, try CPC and CP gram. When the when it is executed. If it is executed, registration is a subsequent process. You have to do it within 30 days. Answer, you can give your own answer. Only if it is 56, 210 is applicable, then reported. Otherwise, no. Sir, I have two questions. Uh, 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 to person maintain 44 hours. Yeah. But in under 44 ADA, is correct. In the first report, should be report, yes or no? According to me, yes. Yes, we should maintain, we should say, yes. Even otherwise, sir, you are maintaining your balance sheets, right. you are reporting your capital, you are reporting your investments, you are reporting bank balances. No, you are reporting, no? No, sir. I mean, Information of the assets you report in 44 ADA, sir. I think so. Again. Yeah, and then the whatever the minimum information is required right. that you report, right. no? So for that also you are maintaining the record, no, sir? Easy question, no, sir? No difficult question. <laughs> Approved, approved valuer will give you that report. If it is approved valuer, it is, it is deemed to be accepted. See, if the integrity and the competency of that person is questioned, then only it is challenged. Right, right. Otherwise, no. Right. Awesome. Okay. Two ways. Two ways. Either business income or you show it as an income from house property. Two options, but GST would apply. Hello, hmm. uh, sir. Uh, the developer has deducted tax source uh, on. So actually, on corpus no. Correct. There is a judgment, movement tribunal judgment on that point. No, no, that is there. 
because what uh, the club income of the capital gains, how we have to some cases more than one like uh, ten ten percent. Hmm. So under what uh, particular head of is it is it uh, income first? Huh? Is it a income? It is, it is not income. Okay. No, let, let's let us uh, divide the transaction. First, lim is is it a income? It is not a income. Question number two. In your TDS twenty six AS, it will appear. It will appear. Second answer. Third. If you want to claim the income. As x amount, you got to map in your IT returns how you are offering that to income. Correct? Am I right? Yes. So you will show business income, capital gains, or income from other sources, or income from house property. Business income is out because you are not in a business. Can you show us the income from house property? Answer is no. What is the last option available? Income from other sources. Once you show that income as an income from other sources, show the exact amount of deduction against that. So for a year, so ten lakh rupees, show ten lakh rupees as deductible as an expense, and file the return. If inquiry comes, fight it out. Sir, unless and until you show the income, you are you will not get the TDS credits. Yes, this is the only way out. There is no other way out. Yes, that's the only option. That is you have a supporting documents, no, sir. Yes, you have all supporting total document to prove, no. You have a choice in which head you want to offer, whether I want to show it as a business income, house property, or income from other sources. Clear? And whatever it is, say what. Yes. Yes. Some of the property we are rent at. Suppose March twenty. One property was let out for twenty five thousand. So after remaining vacant for four five months, uh, it's good. Twenty property. So for that uh, five. Ideally, you report only rent received okay. and file the returns. There is no more. There is no concept of vacancy allowances anymore. It's gone. That is, it was there long time back. I don't even remember when it was there. Yes. Sir, return is sir, return is defined uh, in extended due date. Can the SSC carry for the loss? The loss. Uh, uh, long short long term capital. Loss. Extended due date means. Time limit expired. Extended as per section one thirty nine one. Yes, from July to December. If that is the case, eligible for where is the doubt? No, the the one forty three one A has this amount. Now you show them the notification copy. Notification. No, that is. Notification number nine. That is that is. All the benefits are extended, sir. Correct, that is right. That has been put forth, but but appeal. Come to file the appeal, and either you file or approach councils. Thanks. Nitin Bhai, 
as you committed during your presentation and deliberation you have not touched upon any of the citations or the sec particular section but sir truly speaking today you have run through entire income tax act right so including huh? so including each and every heads you have touched upon and in your presentation sir you have covered latest changes in the itr common mistakes everything so truly speaking your sessions was very full of informations and most of the member and today since after the covid it's my personal observation since april when i have taken over the charge today the maximum queries were raised by the members in the first session even in the second session so the way it was the this session was a very interactive so thank you very much nitin bhai for accepting our invitation now to have the formal vote of thanks i would like to invite our deputy convener ca puri bagere ji to propose the article start start conducting physical way A very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I would like to propose a very hearty vote of thanks to today's speaker, C. N. Nathan Guda. So you've uh, made uh, very detailed deliberations on mistakes. But we <laughs> we all realize that uh, actually time is too short to commit mistakes on our own, and it's better to learn from others. So we uh, we have greatly benefited from your presentation. We are hopeful that all of us will be committing lesser and lesser mistakes in our return filing this year, and uh, helping all our clients. So thank you so much for touching upon all the ITR upgradations, the mistakes that we commonly do. and giving us a lot of food of thought food for thought for our uh, upcoming tax filing sessions thank you thank you so much uh, one more announcement the next uh, study circle meeting is scheduled on the 18th of june it is on the latest amendments in the tds and tcs provisions it is a virtual meeting i request all the members to please attend the meeting and uh, take benefit from it thank you thank you all